Okay, kids, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on the quill handle for the mill. This is a big project, and the project that we're doing right now, this is a side project to the bigger project. That video will be coming soon. What I have to do is I'm updating the clock spring on the Natong mill. This is where the clock spring sits. goes in here, and then this goes into this clock spring holder I'm not sure what it's called and this is actually the quill handle and the quill handle latches into these cogs gears whatever you want to call it and it turns the quill now as you can see how janky this is um, you know it's loose the springs have been long gone the handle would fall down number one get in the way the clock spring here is non-existent, so the quill would fall too. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm upgrading this to a speed handle for a bridge port. Now, these are two different machines. Even though they call these clones, they're two different machines. The parts are not interchangeable, and I cannot get a clock spring for this. So what I have to do, and we're going to go over the mill here in a minute, what I have to do is this part for the bridge port I will have to cut a key in it to match this keyway and I'm going to explain that to you let's head over to the mill yes this is the completed project so the way this works you see this area here this is where the clock spring is so it's essentially this piece here and then this piece is this piece here and even though they look similar they are completely different like I said there was a ton of machining involved just to get it to this point that's going to be a different video what I'm going to show you right now is there's a sh the shaft right here is keyed right here there's a key in the shaft and that actually is what turns the quill turns moves the quill so like I said, this keyway was too small. It didn't match this keyway. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make a keyway cutter to cut this keyway to match this. I go to my box of broken bits and worn out bits and I'm going to take a 3 16 end mill and grind a cutting edge on it. Hopefully this is what it's going to look like when I'm done. I'm just grinding 10 degree reliefs on the bottom and the sides. This is a no brainer. You know, I could have bought a set of brooches, but they are expensive and I don't use them that much. I don't film it, but I head off to the grinder. I didn't do a bad job. I'll do a better job on the next one. You'll see what I mean. I take a piece of 5 8 stock, I drill a hole in the end of it to accept the end mill, 3 16 I'm going to have to turn this down to a half inch to fit into my drill press. I'm going to put a set screw in the end to hold the end mill in place, which is really my cutter. And then stick it in the uh, drill press and we'll start cutting keys. I start by facing it off. Why? Just because that's what we do. Next, I turn this down to a half inch. This isn't a critical dimension. It just needs to be small enough to fit into my drill press. This is just mild steel. It cuts easy. Next I have to drill a hole for the set screw. 
I don't have a set screw, so I'm just going to use a four millimeter bolt. We need to tap the hole and we'll be ready to go. All right, so this is how it's going to work. It's going to go in a drill press and it's going to push down like that. Okay. Now, I need to trim that off flush, and I'm going to use the angle grinder because it's high-speed steel. It'll strip the teeth off of the bandsaw. Okay, can you guys see it right there? So the idea is I'm going to push it down through the material. Now, I don't think this little tiny drill press is going to be able to do it, but... I'm going to tell you, this, I mean, it's kind of working, but it's not. The problem is, if I was on the mill, you see the spindle moving? That's part of the problem. I clamped the vise down. This is working a little better. But as you can see, there's deflection in the tool. See how it's moving? Also, the spindle is rotating. I can't lock that. And the head of the drill press twisted. And the table actually twisted. This is a tiny bench top drill press. I'm asking a lot out of this thing. It's hard to see. But it was cutting. It is doing its job. All right. So why this didn't work, as you can see, this is my bench top drill press. That's how small it is. In comparison, look at the reed vise that you know I fixed and I'm using it. It barely fits on the table. This thing is not made for what I was doing. You could also see as I was doing it, see how the head twisted? on the shaft <laughs> the other thing is can you see how out of whack the table is so for me pushing down on it it twisted the table so that wasn't helping and then the other thing was even when i clamped it i couldn't keep the vise tight enough and if i could have making those fine adjustments just wasn't working if you had a bigger drill press I'm sure you could get something to work better, but in this case, it just wasn't doing the trick. That's why I head off over to the lathe. All right, guys, what I decided to do, to do was put it in the lathe, and you see I have it set up like a boring bar, and the only thing I'm gonna do is just move the carriage in, here cutting a little bit and then I'll just move my cross slide out you know a couple couple thousands hear it there's definitely resistance and that's all the further I can go for now I think that's gonna be pretty good and it is cutting uh, so that's promising you got to take light cuts because these machines are not made to do this. We don't want to break anything. Ultimately, I'd be doing this on the mill, which that's not made for it either, but obviously the mill is, is down. Yeah, come out. Thousands or so. Can you guys see that? I still got a long way to go. I got, a, I got another idea for now. Let, let's try something different. Okay, so the issue with doing it on the lathe, as you could see, it did work. Um, but so in order to go in and out, 
I had to use the cross slide in and we're going to call that in and out and if it go left and right I had to use move my table so this is actually what was doing the cutting okay and which it was working good unfortunately the lathe you don't have any adjustment in your Z right in this case it would be up and down so the only way you could adjust the tool was you actually have to loosen this this you actually loosen the tool right See, this moves the tool, and then you, this is the tool height adjustment. You see this right here, and you see it's moving, that's up, and it's moving down like this. So, you know, that was limited. It was very hard to do, um, and it was working, but it was tedious. So that's why I abandoned the lathe and decided to put the old quill back on the the mill. Okay guys, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is the, uh, the this is the old one that goes in here and the quill handle goes on. This is what the key fits. I'm going to turn this down, which I already started. I'm going to get this turned down so I can get this put on. See, I'm, I'm close. And then I can put the old quill handle on, and then I can use the mill to actually broach this. That way I'll be able to see what's going on. I can use the table to move it in and out, X and Y, and it would be con more controlled. So I ordered a new handle for this, you know, that matches this. But if I can get this to work, at least I can get my mill back up and running. So... We're close. We got to turn down just a little bit more. You see it's hitting. All right, let's go back to the lathe. I had to hit it with some emery cloth to get it to work. This is going to be a tight fit. So now what we have to do, we have to get that in just like so. <laughs> Sorry, we have to get it in just like so. And now we have to get this put in there. <laughs> you know how that's going to work. It's seated in there pretty good. Let's see what we can do. I got this damn light in my way. Ow. There it is. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, sure. Yep, it's in there. You guys see it? Now, let's do a little sanity check here. You know, this is the old one, obviously. Oh, look at that. And it's not falling down. Can you guys see that? Look at that. How about that? Thank you, Lord. Uh -oh. I got the cutter set up in the mill. This is going to do the trick. This is definitely going to work. I guess my, what am I hitting here? Bananas. Oh, it's 
ると思うね。This thing's working great. I'm in a home stretch here. I'm going to get this thing done. And guess what happens? Who didn't see that coming? Of course, I forgot to hit the record button, but got a tore apart. And if you look, this is the one that came out of it. It is a little wider than the one I was using for a template. Who didn't see that coming? But it sure looks like the depth's good enough. But it's just off ever so slightly. I wish I wouldn't have broke that tool. All right. All right, I ground up a new tool. I actually like this one a little bit better. This is the cutting edge. It's going to be pushing down. And if we, I know this thing's hard to see. But look, that fits in there really good. It's... You know, I got just a tiny bit of wiggle room. So as long as I don't break this one, and this one should be a lot, it's definitely a lot stouter. So now, again, I'm going to have to trim it off. He fits in here good. I'm just cleaning it up with a file. Get rid of some burrs. All right, let's see how this works. Now, this is a perfect shot of my arm. Look at that. All right, we can live with that. Now we need the, uh, got a little bit of a burr there. Now we need the uh, speed quill. All right, guys, I know I was zoomed in there very close because I wanted you guys to see, and the camera was out of focus. It actually was focusing on the back of the mill instead of here. But so what I was doing, <clears throat> so what I was doing is I had the quill, and obviously this is the, the new setup, but I just had the old handle on, and I was moving this up and down, so the quill was going up and down, that's all I was doing. And then what I would do is I would move, you know, my, I was moving the table in and I was moving the table uh, out. So on the X and Y. And this is, if you don't have the press and the actual brooches, this is really the most controlled way of doing it. Okay guys, you see I put a set screw in there I had that uh, four millimeter bolt because that's all I had. I didn't have these set screws. So this will work better. And, you know, the idea also is you can move this cutter in and out because obviously when you're moving the whole holder in and out, you run out of real estate. And then as far as grinding, uh, I, I ground this maybe like 10 degrees if that. I know it's very hard to see, so I'm going to make a drawing. You just need to have a relief. You have to have a relief you know, front to back and then front to side just so it can cut. It's not rocket science. Uh, it's not a big deal. This thing worked out great. I know I'll be using this in the future and I'll probably be making more. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.